Welcome back to Afternoon Express. And if you've just joined us, it's a good time because we're just about to get started with this absolutely delicious paella. And you know that I was recently in Spain. I know, so jealous. And I'm missing it so much already. So I'm so glad that we've got a nice right. little Spanish dish just to maybe help me with my tan. And add a the, bit of South African flair because, I mean, why of not? Course, of course. <laughs> Can you pass me the olive oil? So the first sure. thing we're going to do is we get... Oh, look at that. Oh, Spanish flair. <laughs> so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our onions that have been just roughly chopped. We're mm -hmm. going to start sauteing them off. Yeah. So if you've got time, the longer you actually cook them, the longer you cook them and the at lower temperature, the more sweet and the more oniony flavour actually comes out. All That's onions or just the red ones? All onions. You, oh, should, be cooking, you should be cooking them for like 20, 30 minutes before you even add the next ingredient. Is that a fact? It's a fact. So Good trick, Clem. We're going to use, strangely enough, I know that you just came from the Mediterranean, you know it's in Spain and Ibiza, it's bomba rice you're supposed mm -hmm. to use. Yeah. We don't really get bomba rice in the country, so we're gonna use an Italian favorite, arborio, which okay. you normally use for risotto. Nice. But the way that we're gonna cook it, it's gonna help us. We're gonna get that almost bomba type rice effect. Okay. So that goes in there. I don't gonna... know what the difference is. Is there a big difference? Yeah, well, the, between the two of them, what's great is they're both short grain rice, which is what okay. you want. They've got some starch in there, which helps us develop that extra flavor and thickness in risottos and paellas. Lovely. So that's what you want. That's why you're not supposed to be using basmati or normal long grain rice, because that's a, that's a, it's a criminal offense. It won't get sticky enough for what? It won't. It'll break apart. Okay. I mean, it'll still taste all right, but you're not going to get that amazing texture that you want. Okay. So it's important that you coat all the rice in the oil. That mm. way it's going to start toasting beautifully and develop its own flavor. So what I've got in here is, I've kind of created something called a sofrito. Sofrito. Hey, look at, because you know. African, South African frito. It's a South African frito, no, it's not. <laughs> so also it's Spanish, it's like the base of the sauce. So the, the, okay. the sauce, which is the base, sofrito. sofrito. In here I've got some tomato paste, some coriander, some parsley, some garlic, mm -hmm. toasted coriander, some cumin, again bringing some, some African flavor in there, yeah. and a lot of garlic. And I just blended that all up. So our sofrito... So where does the sofrito come from? Is that the that's name? That's the name, that's that the name. Yeah, yeah. You didn't invent it? No, I didn't invent oh, okay. it. okay. <laughs> so African frito. I'm concentrating today. It's, it's okay, because sometimes I do crazy things like that. So, <laughs> so what you're going to do again is coat the rice in the sauce. Mm. Make sure that each grain gets coated really well. Yes. Can you pass some of the water for me? Sure. So what you're going to do now is now you're going to add the water and you're going to let it start cooking. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that the rice is going to start puffing up, it's going to start swelling, and the starch is going to be released. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to end up with, if I can just move this to the side, or way to the side, is something like this. And you can Ooh. see all that liquid has been absorbed into the rice and it's quite thick, which is really good. That's what we want. We don't want it to be too loose. Exactly. So into that's going to go some lemon. I love lemon in paella. Yeah. A lot of it. And then the snook. So I'm using Woolies Sustainably Caught Snook, and that's very important. When it comes to fish, you should only be sourcing and eating sustainably caught fish. And that's yes, what Woolies is all east. about. Mm. So you're not going to go wrong by buying fish from Woolies because you know it's the real deal. Yeah. And you're helping support our ecosystem. Exactly. So into that, here we go. See, I got someone else to flake the snook for me. <laughs> because, you know, you flake snook now, and a week later someone will know about it because you'll still be smelling like it. Oh, is that a fact? <laughs> okay, but how do you flake a... F a like a fish. Okay. <laughs> what we've done is we've just roasted this guy in the oven for a few minutes. Yeah. And then we just carefully, if you want. Like if I wanted to do this by myself, I mean, how would I flake the fish? Okay. Put gloves on. Why not? Then you're not going to get okay. that fishy, smoky smell on your hands. Yeah. Otherwise, when you're done, wash it immediately with other, like, a, a dishwashing liquid that contains lemon in there. Okay. And it'll take those oils right out. And then do you just stay there with a fork and just push? Oh, how do you actually flake it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You take two forks. I mean, that's the easiest thing. Or your okay. hands and just break it apart. All Remove right. as many of the bones as you can. Exactly. You can't always get every single bone out, so be careful. Because you don't want to be choking But then the do you have to use snook in particular? Or can you use any fish? Because I, I like boneless fish. Absolutely. So go for something like trout, for like yeah. salmon, or even hake, because hake's got a few bones, but you're gonna, they're quite big enough to so take it out. Yeah. Then I've got some fresh peas, if you can pass that to me. There you go. And then that just goes in. You've also got some chilli. How much do you dare? So the chilli's actually been in our sofrito <laughs> already, but if you want to be daring, you can totally go ahead. No, I'm not that daring. <laughs> so that's it. You just kind of warm the snook through again, get those flavours to marry. And then oh, I'm going to come soft sides good. with you quickly because I want to chop some sure. parsley. I want to get closer to the dish you're making. Oh, that looks so good, Claire. And it's quite hearty. And another thing yeah. is, the longer it sits, the more intense the flavour becomes. Exactly. It's quite strange. It's like a curry. Yeah. But again, we've used those curry spices like coriander and cumin. 
So fresh, so yum. Helping of parsley, and you got to serve. And that's it. The lemon in the Basically, actual pan. Basically, the flaking has been the hardest part of this. It recipe. is. It is so easy. Okay. And if you wanted, you could even adapt this for the oven if you don't want to be standing over the stove into the mm. oven for a little bit. And you're good to go. So, so delicious. I highly recommend this. So remember, if you would also like to make this delicious dish, all you need to do is send us an SMS, type in SNOOK and send it to 33650. And they will send you the shopping list and, of course, the recipes. T's and C's apply. SMSs cost one round fifty each. Right now, though, let's have a look at the recap. So over the last few weeks, we've been encouraging you to send in your pictures of dishes using your favorite Sasco product. And today we're going to be announcing the final winner of the Sasco toaster and the hamper. On the line right now, we have finalist Renuka, who posted her donut disturbed cupcakes using Sasco vanilla mix. Hi, Renuka. How are you? Hi, I'm well, thank you. And yourself? I'm superb. And I'm just almost salivating because your donut disturbed cupcakes sound delicious. Tell us a bit about them. So I use the Sasco muffin mix, the vanilla flavor. Yeah. And uh, because we enjoy our donuts and we're looking at trimming down a little bit, I decided that I'd uh, come up with a recipe to include uh, the donut flavor in my, uh, wow. in my muffins. So what I decided to do is add in a little bit of vanilla essence, a little bit of wow. cinnamon uh, powder to my mix, um, and uh, just, you know, I baked it according to the instructions on the packet. Yeah. And when they came out, I dipped them in melted butter, real melted butter though, and then dipped them in a bit of a uh, combination of sugar and uh, cinnamon powder. And, and are they uh, quite donut-y? Do they have that softness on the inside like a donut? Absolutely. You know, I've been using Tesco products since uh, I can remember, and they are always reliable, always fresh. So the inside was very uh, soft vanilla -y. You could eat it the next day, and mm. it tasted really delicious. It was really a donut without the calories. Well, I do not believe that I haven't had a bite of one of them yet. They sound amazing. Well, let me tell you yeah. something. You are the winner. Congratulations. Thank you. And we're going to be Thank sending you, you that so Sasco much. hamper and, of course, the gorgeous toaster. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And thank you to Sasco and to Afternoon Express. I've really been able to, to use my creative flair and get baking. Thank you so much. Amazing. You've inspired me. I'm going to try and make a donut cupcake you now. You have to. You have to. <laughs> Lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you very ah, much. Take care. Cheers. Bonnie, over to you. <laughs> well, don't move because in a short while, we chat to Paul Dutoy, rough and tough actor, and all the reasons why we love a man in a good suit. Don't go away. Express yourself.